Now, Jacob Wetterling's killer comes forward, bringing answers to Minnesota's most famous mystery. My whole name is Jacob Irvin Wetterling. Because for us, Jacob was alive until we found until we found him. What did I do wrong? An innocent child's words as a stranger abducts him. I want to say, Jacob, I'm so sorry. It's incredibly painful. A case that changed the way kids grow up. His legacy will go on. And the road to healing after decades of waiting to bring Jacob home. Good evening. The faceless kidnapper who haunted Minnesotans for a generation unmasked himself in court today. A stranger grabbed 11-year-old Jacob Wetterling as he biked home with his brother and best friend in 1989. What happened that October night in St. Joseph remained one of the state's most puzzling mysteries until now. In a courtroom confession, 53-year-old Danny Heinrich revealed he's the one law enforcement hunted all these years. Heinrich admitted to kidnapping, molesting, and killing Wetterling near a gravel pit outside of Painesville. I want to say, Jacob, I'm so sorry. It's incredibly painful to know his last days, last hours, last minutes. In our team coverage tonight, Jennifer Merrily shares words from the Wetterlings. Kate Raditz is in Jacob's hometown. And Susan Elizabeth Littlefield explains how a kidnapping survivor helped solve this case. But we start with WCCO's Esme Murphy and the horrifying answer to the question that we've waited so long to hear. What happened to Jacob? Esme? Well, Amelia, after signing his plea deal in court and being sworn in, Danny Heinrich, in a strong and matter-of-fact tone, recounted the devastating details of Jacob Wetterling's last hours. It was just after 8 p.m. on a now infamous St. Joseph Road that Danny Heinrich, then 26, was driving his Ford EXP sedan when he saw three boys pass him on bikes. He pulled into a driveway and waited for them to return. He then put on his mask, grabbed a gun, jumped out of the darkness, and ordered them to the ground. He testified he grabbed Jacob and threatened to kill Jacob's brother Trevor and best friend Aaron Larson. He grabbed Jacob and then he told me to run as fast as I could into the woods or else he'd shoot. Heinrich said he then handcuffed Jacob's hands behind his back and forced him into the front seat. Jacob asked, what did I do wrong? Heinrich then drove Jacob for about 45 minutes from St. Joseph onto Interstate 94, heading west 15 miles to Albany. He then drove him 30 miles south on country roads towards his own hometown of Painesville. Two miles east of Painesville, off of what was then State Highway 23, he stopped at what was back then a gravel pit. He then had Jacob strip, and he molested him. A half hour later, Jacob said he was cold. Heinrich allowed Jacob to dress and told him, don't cry. Then Heinrich, who had a portable scanner in his car, began to hear police activity nearby. The search for Jacob was underway. Heinrich said, I panicked. I pulled the revolver out of my pocket. I told Jacob to turn around. I told him I had to go to the bathroom. He testified he then shot Jacob in the back of the head. After the first shot, Jacob was still standing. He fired again, and Jacob collapsed. Heinrich then left the body, returning later that night to bury the remains. A year later... Danny Heinrich returned to the site and saw Jacob's clothing was visible. He then dug up the remains and moved them about a mile to a farm outside Painesville. There he buried Jacob a second time. I mentioned the first thing Danny Heinrich did today in court was sign a plea deal. He agreed to plead guilty to one count of receiving child pornography in exchange for his confession. He'll be sentenced to the maximum of 20 years in prison in November. And Esme, a lot of people are really angry that Heinrich is only getting 20 years and, and the fact that he's not facing murder charges. There's a lot of reaction to that, Amelia. It's important, I think, to remember this is a plea agreement that the Wetterling family agreed to. And remember when they agreed to it just last week, they were hoping to get the answer to what they have wanted to know for almost 27 years, what happened to Jacob. Most people associated with this case believe that without this deal, the answer, as horrible as it has turned out to be, would never have been known. All right. Thank you, Esme.